Great. So first, just tell us your name and your title. My name is Sue Galliano. I'm the president of the Grand Isle Community Development Team, which is a nonprofit 501c3 here on Grand Isle. And we do all kinds of little projects uh, that the town doesn't have time to do and things like that, just worthy projects that we get involved with. Great. And then can you tell us a little bit about why this area, why Grand Isle is so important? Uh, Grand Isle is a very important uh, barrier island, and barrier islands protect the main coastline. Grand Isle sits right on the Gulf, and it protects all of the estuary area behind us. There's miles and miles of estuary back there, home to baby shrimp, baby crabs, baby shrimp, fish. And it does, it, it provides that protection from the open Gulf, which if Grand Isle ever goes, it'll be open Gulf all the way up to Baton Rouge, so, or the backside of New Orleans. So it protects that, it, it creates a natural barrier, and all barrier islands, which is why they call them that, uh, do that. So it's, um, it's, it's just a very important place to keep and to protect through the whole coastline system of barrier islands along uh, the Louisiana coast especially, which are eroding at an, an alarming rate, and we would really like to be able to keep those from having that to happen. It's also just a great place on a, um, People love coming to Grand Isle. They've had camps and homes here for years. They love it. It's just a wonderful place to come and fish. It's great for the summer. People enjoy the, the habitat. They, you can fish here in the morning. You can go oystering. You can crab on the beach. You can just lay on the beach, rest and relax. So it's a, it's a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's mainly just a wonderful place uh, to be, besides its, its importance as a, a barrier island. Great. And my last question is, so now it's been a year since the oil spill. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know about where you are now and where the community is now and trying to move on? Well, actually, uh, the island took a hard hit. We had oil on the beaches. Uh, they had teams to come in to clean up the beach and uh, did what they needed to do to get the beach. The, the beach is beautiful. It's raked. Uh, we, we were already raking the beach daily. The town was already doing that. You know, any trash that got on the beach, any driftwood, whatever, anything that popped up, we were doing that already. So when they came in and the oil started coming up on the beaches, uh, they just really came down and did lots of work on that. They had people picking up uh, oil and uh, cleaning the beach and all kinds of machinery that was involved. Uh, for the most part, everybody, you know, that's, that lives here full time, was all happy, you know, I mean, you, you've got to be happy that they came down and did it. I mean, it was, it needed to be done, they needed to do it because they made the mess, they needed to clean it up. But as with any kind of a disaster, you need to start looking forward to the future, and we're a year later, and for the most part, the beach is still clean, there are people, I'm sure it's still coming up in little places, but they call, they come and they get it really quickly. It was hard on the local folks last year, the tourism business was way off because everybody was, you know, they come to go fishing, they come to go to the beach. So it was a little precarious for the island. A lot of people lost money. Uh, we, we normally have a fishing rodeo every weekend, every weekend of the year, and or in the summer, from about April till October. And they all canceled. Now the ladies fishing rodeo that, that our club does is in October. And by that point, the fishing areas were clean pretty much. And it wasn't as bad as it was. And people were kind of feeling good about, OK, let's go back to the island. But economically, it was a big hit on the island. Um, the areas that were really marshy areas that had oil on them and globs of oil and things like that, that was very devastating for those areas. They've managed to clean a lot of that up. Uh, I personally haven't been back there in a while, so I don't know what it looks like. I, I do sail around the island on a sailboat, and I do see lots of uh, teams still out working. So I guess as it washes up, you know, you get a few more and a few more tar balls, as we call them. But they are trying. They are making a valiant effort. Personally, I feel that uh, there's no way to fix it other than just to address it as it happens, as it comes up. We would really like to have, um, ha like to have never had it happen, but since it did, all we can do now is just go forward with our lives and just go on with it. But we do, my philosophy is just hold their feet to the fire, make them do what they're supposed to do, don't give up, and if a tar ball washes up, then it's their job to come clean it up. So that's kind of the tack that most of us have taken, and you can 
you know, things are going to come up and happen, but it's no use to just dwell on the negative. You know, we've got to go on living. It's, it's like the people in Japan right now. As bad as that is, they still have to create, you know, their lives that go on. So that's kind of where we're at here. We're not happy about it, but it's no use to just stay negative. And that's the one nice thing about the average person that lives here on Grand Isle. You're here because you want to be. You're here because you enjoy it. You like the you like the, the way life is here. It's very calm. It's very, uh, for the most part, everybody uh, enjoys it. I mean, where else can you go that you don't have a stoplight? You know, that's, that's wonderful. Where else can you go fishing three times in the same day in three different places? You know, the bridge, the beach, or on the bay. It's just one of those rare and special places. So we want everybody to, to know that, yes, we're still concerned, but we're, we're holding their feet to the fire, we're staying on top of it, and we're just not going to let them get the best of us. So anything that anybody can do later for us as far as coastal restoration, we would appreciate any help for that cause because before the oil spill we were working on restoration because you want to maintain these barrier islands because they are what protect the coastline. So come on down to Grand Island and see us.